Good morning, everybody. You know, today is going to be another one of those days, it's like every weekday is, every time that we do these things, I always try to deliver some kind of message in there, some reason for you to, to move, some reason for you to do something, some way for you to help out with those, that PR networking or business building events or actions that you take. And so many of those things are dependent upon one factor, you. You, you as to how you see you. And it's really super important for you to feel good about yourself, good about yourself as you're continuing on with your own journey. We all have stuff that we deal with. I fully get that. But you need to be comfortable that you are making progress. And you know what's really fascinating? He says, oh, yeah, I got involved with this nonprofit that gives back. What happens? Man, we wind up getting so much from that. And I don't mean business, the rest of that. I just mean that that feel-good fact. It's like, wow, I put a smile on someone else's face. I was able to help somebody out in some way. And look what that, look what that person was able to accomplish. That's great. So how do we wind up in those situations? Well, sometimes it's a decision. Other times it's just because of circumstances that we are personally in. And other times... Well, other times it's because of the grouping of people that we're at, the geographical location. Our family winds up getting involved in something and then it just kind of works and it stays and it makes a whole lot of sense. So well, whatever, whatever that triggering event is that moves you into the direction of getting involved with your community, with the nonprofit, with something that's helping other people, just do it. By all means, do it because you're going to do amazing things with amazing people. You wind up building out this great circle of friends, business associates as it goes through, and you're going to wind up doing something for yourself that you'd never thought possible. And that's really feeling good about the efforts that you are taking and having a fun time doing it too. So who are we speaking to today that's having a fun time doing it also? Well, we're speaking to MDP Lacrosse. The gentleman that will be sharing his thoughts with this has been involved with the Michael Magro Foundation for quite a while, has become a board member, and his name is Jimmy Montana. And Jimmy, I really want to thank you so much for joining us here today and sharing your story about getting involved with, with the Michael, well, with the Magro family. Forget about the sure. foundation, you know, going back to the family side of it, but uh, and what you're doing on, with the lacrosse and how it works out with everything. It's just really a super great story to tell. And, and, and thank you again for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Happy to be here. That's good. So uh, it, why don't you tell the backstory of it, you know, how you got involved or your relationship with the, with the Magros and, and where that kind of transpired sure. and, and grew from. And then we'll go from there. Sure. Yeah. So I, I grew up in Hicksville, uh, same town as, um, as Michael Magro and, um, and the family. And uh, just grew up playing lacrosse, playing sports. Uh, I'm much older than Michael, uh, but my my older brother, my first lacrosse coach, my my brother Mike, um, he ended up coaching Michael um, in his uh, you know fifth, sixth grade years. And um, you know, so my brother my brother had a relationship earlier than uh, than myself with the Magro family. But over the years, as I was transitioning jobs an opportunity presented itself to run a lacrosse event for this nonprofit. And I jumped on it and kind of, as they say, the rest is history. The rest is history. There you go. <laughs> you know, you're, yeah, so you're doing something that really, really, really fits in super well, you know, with the, um, you know, with the family. Because yes. lacrosse was like such a big, big factor in yeah. everything. And, you know, and it's great to see not only you and, and, and the company, but the, like all the lacrosse plays just, really getting behind this yeah at first it was um uh, my lacrosse training company um was it, it was a kind of a good fit because the the logo for the magro foundation is a penguin holding a lacrosse stick um because yeah. that was michael's that was michael magro's favorite sport and um you know me in the lacrosse world them not truly having like a consistent youth sports uh footprint uh, they they had done a couple of events, but this this kind of propelled it into like something a little more consistent for the foundation as a fundraising um, as fundraising events. 
And, and, and this also holds true. It, it, this has got to fall into that awareness side of things in, in a bigger way, let's say, than some of the, than the golf of that. Although that's always a factor, you know, within everything, because you're talking that age group uh, yes. of players. Yes. You know, the age group with the players, and, you know, every parent always wants to see the, you know, the best for the child and you just never know sometimes. So I think that's uh, awareness, sensitivity factor, you know, yeah. really plays out with the parents. But I'm wondering what the impact with the other lacrosse players, you know, yeah. that, you know, a, 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 a raising their awareness about, you know, the nonprofit community that it's there are some things that are bigger than whatever we're doing, you know, individually right. and how much that helps them grow as 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 people sure yeah i mean like our, our basic motto is respect inspire support right so you want to respect the people you want to inspire people you want to support them so that's a message that we share with our athletes and our families that that train with us on our teams and uh in our individual sessions and obviously having a philanthropic arm to it is is huge in that and it just kind of fits together um you know, there is awareness. And um, I think, I think the immediate impact for these young athletes is they get to volunteer their time. Right. So like, we're, we're running an event, I reach out to athletes who uh, maybe aren't eligible based on age, or, you know, if, if they don't play basketball, because we do run a three on three basketball event, they're like, ah, I don't really like basketball. It's like, all right, well, come down and volunteer your time. And you can give back and, you know, get community service hours and things like that. So uh, parents love that. The kids really enjoy it. So it, it gets them involved in the community as well at a young age. Yeah, I would say it absolutely builds character. Yeah. It, whether, yeah. Whether, it's, whether it's seen by the kids or not, it, it, definitely, you know, it definitely builds character. Sure. Uh, I mean, sure. I've seen that with a bunch of uh, events that we've done. And then when you have the the purely, I mean, talking teenagers or even younger than that, you know, get on stage to talk about the stuff that they've done, whether it be fundraising or their own stories, right. you know, stuff like that. It's just absolutely incredible. And it's life changing, yeah. you know, for them, especially those yeah. inflicted with whatever disease. But right. I'm sure with the other players, too, it's a long lasting impact about that. that well, teamwork. I, and, and again, of right. course, being a team sport, last I heard. Uh, yep. Yep. But, and, and, and on the other hand, it's, it's also, it's tangible, right? So it's like, uh, you know, thanks Johnny for helping out today. We just raised, you know, $5,000 for the Michael Magro foundation. And they're just like, Whoa, it's like, you know, you, you helped in that you, you played a role in raising that money. And that's not just donating the money you volunteered. You were uh, running a, you know, a table, you were selling t-shirts, you were doing something and, that's tangible money that's going back to this foundation and and they're always amazed by it yeah it's, but, it's, I'm, I'm i'm still amazed by it <laughs> okay it's incredible what the foundation has been able to accomplish and with so little um formal infrastructure let's phrase it like that <laughs> more formal right <laughs> And we'll, right. we'll go into you being the the, the board member, and then, yeah. then maybe, yeah. maybe you could beat me up on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I won't beat you up on it, but uh, you know, yeah. Terry and Paul, they're they're just they just uh, they're just incredible people. It's uh, they lead with compassion, and they're super positive, and they're incredibly productive. So, you know, like I think uh, just like in any in any business, like culture leads the way, and they've developed a culture. And, you know, it inspires people. It's yeah. inspired me, you know, and it keeps me going. And it's just, it's, 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 it's an incredible opportunity to be a part of it. I guess from an efficiency standpoint, if you take a look back at, at, at their careers, Paul being within the restaurant industry, I mean, you don't want to have a lot of waste in the right. restaurant, you know, because right. you can't store food for, you, you know, store food, you can't waste time. Everything's down to the second. Right. And then Terry on the medical side of things, too. It's sure. it's, it's an interesting collection of careers that has allowed them to do this yeah. between the efficiency side of it, the sensitivity you know, side of it and actually yeah. making things happen. But it's you board members, too. Let's uh, let's give credit where credit is due. It's you board members that step up to the plate. Well, that's probably not a good term to use. In the <laughs> front world. You translate that one into whatever would be appropriate. Athletics, it's OK. <laughs> But really, it, you know, it, it really is. I, and then it filters all the way down, you know, on through. 
Uh, yeah, so, I mean, as, if we're talking athletics, it's just like being part of a team. It's it's just a team that that shifts its focus onto you know helping a, a certain a certain set of people, and we love doing it. And I think when you know we we celebrate you know because each most board like the majority of board members chair an event or a couple of events or you know play a major role in some of the bigger events. And we just, we, we celebrate, you know, each other, we celebrate uh, each other's events. We support each other's events. We make sure we, if we can, we attend um, their events and, you know, it's, it, it is, it's a team. I mean, that, that's really what it is. And to, to tie it back into uh, my business with youth sports and training athletes and coaching athletes, we always give advice as, you know, like, like life is all about relationships, networking, and relationships and that's that's really what this is and terry and paul have brought together a, a, just a great group of of individuals who want to be part of a team but, but it, it, that has to translate amazingly well to the players i mean staying let's now staying really on, on what you do you know as sure. a business with the lacrosse team yeah but like everything that we would say about the foundation or everything that we would say about a business you know it's a team sport we're all there to support each other so much of it's um many places all a bunch of words it's just a bunch of words it's yeah. not until you and it's very uh it's great let's put it this way it's great when there are organizations that really live by that standard where sure. we're all here to help each other you know any mistake that's made is a learning a learning experience you know that we all from that daily we try to do a little bit better uh when you got a team of, of players out there and the you the the, the kids that you're coaching, the, these teams, are they all, we're all going to go to college, get scholarship teams, or are they more community teams? And, yeah, majority of kids on Long Island who play lacrosse really aspire to play in college at, at that next level. Right. Yeah, 99% of them. Okay, yeah. so yeah. you're dealing with uh, personality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, dealing kids, with, right? um, you know, I work with families, uh, you know, I work with kids that are, you know, seniors in college and I work with second graders and it all comes down to really what they're looking for. Um, and like I said, the majority of them do aspire to play at a, at a higher level. So really it's just, it just comes down to like really helping them become self-aware and say, okay, well, these are my goals. That gives me direction. And then giving them tangible drills and, and, and things to work on so they can discipline themselves. Right. So it's like the, the goals give you direction and your discipline is going to deliver you to your destination. And each kid might have, you know, I might aspire to play at a certain school that's division three. I'm, you know, he, she might aspire to play at a school that's division one. And that's great. And I, I'm there to support. Like I say, if I'm training you, Brian, I say, you know, I'm on team Brian. Like I'm here for you. Like if we were, and, and I always use the analogy of, if, if we're walking out to the octagon, like, you know, like, like the big night, the big fight night, like, I just want to be in your entourage. That, that's what I'm here for. Okay, right? so it's it's not gonna my show, it's your show. Entourage on that one there, all right? But I'm here to support like, you. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm a fan of being on stage. <laughs> 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 we could we could discuss that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> start training tomorrow. <laughs> right, right, right. But so, but so, if you've got these the, the players and they're focused on going to college and the scholarships and stuff like that, they, they that understanding of that they're going to go, they're going to succeed by being a part of a team, by mm -hmm. not being the spotlight all the time, uh, and and understanding that. I mean, that is a that is a. Um, a great character trait to walk away from from a team sport and ultimately it has to be that I, I sure. can't imagine right if you're a superstar player and you're like running it over your own teammates I, I don't yeah no it's uh, it, it's definitely um there's definitely a fine line of of really uh you know really developing your individual skills because you need to be in shape. You need to have a good stick. You need to know how to score, defend, uh, you know, whatever position you play, you definitely need to be competent. And that takes a lot of time. But then like what you're saying is the, the, the psychological aspect, the, the mental aspect of, okay, now how do I fit my skills into the strategy of, of what my coaches and what my team are asking and what they need. 
And honestly, from, from all of my hours and years training individuals, I've, you know, I, I've heard it all. And I also have, and to, to the athlete's benefit, I also have experience coaching at the division one level, the division two level. Uh, I spent a, a year um, at the MLL. And so I've, you know, I've coached teams on every level. I was a varsity head coach, high school head coach. Um, so I can, you know, there is a fine line with the individual and the team. And it's, it, it always comes back to like, what are you willing to give to make your teammates better? And it always starts with your individual skills. Like you need to be competent to help your teammates. If absolutely, you know, Brian, if you're a really good scorer, I need to do my best to get you the ball. So if I'm taking care of what I need to take care of, I can get you the ball and then we can all be successful. But yes, as a coach and in the sports world, that's the, that's the secret sauce is getting kids to believe in the vision and then to execute on it. And that's, you know, that's really what, you know, keeps me really intrigued in coaching and, and being in sports. Yep. And that's, and, that, and that skill set is something that's translatable to the foundations yeah. to the business world across the, 100%. Across the way. Yep. So if you, yeah. But so by you, um, instilling that and making sure that the players really understand that aspect of it, that I can only be as successful as I could become with you being successful. Also where we're working together, you know, to, that, to, to improve upon ourselves. Nope. That's just, it's just a, yeah. that's yeah. a lifelong skill. <laughs> yeah. It's a recipe of, yeah. Like I said, it's a recipe of, of skills, strategy, and really spirit, like your attitude and your effort towards your teammates. And when, and when you really spin it, because a, a lot of kids start out and they're like, well, you know, I'm playing lacrosse to get to college or I'm playing lacrosse to get a scholarship or, you know, maybe playing lacrosse gets me into a better school than I would have without sports. And then you flip the script and you say, well, what are you willing to give? You know, and depending on the age, they always kind of like, well, what do you mean? It's like, well, it, it's good what you want to get out of it, but you have to give a lot to truly get what you want. And that's the give and take. And I think that's, that's an important relationship that kids have to learn in their development, that there is a give and there is a get, but I have to give a lot in order to get what I want. And it holds true across the board. I, I keep going back to the Jerry Maguire movie. I love that movie. <laughs> yeah. I love that movie. Yeah, yeah for and sure. Maybe it would take a hit like that for, what is it, $19 million? <laughs> uh, what? The, perhaps the optic, Octagon thing is... Yeah, sure. No, it's not. It's not in the future. Forget it, folks. Dave. Forget that. <laughs> you know, I'll run another marathon or something like that. But yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to get hit in the head. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to get hit right now. No, it doesn't. It doesn't work terribly well. But you know, so what you were talking about too with the uh, the different fundraisers, and they're all significantly different in the aspect of what they're doing. They're yes. all significantly different. It's all like in the oh, I use the word target market, but the folks that are attending. You know, some of these things, you got the car show, you mm -hmm. with the lacrosse, so the car show is, you know, one aspect of it, uh, the the golfing, you know, and you much more family, well, I guess it's more family than the golfing, but I'm not too sure it's more family oriented than the car show things, because yeah, they, I mean, the whole yeah. family shows up at that one, but it still is a different environment. Yeah, and I think that goes back to the team that Terry and Paul has built uh, as board members, and it, you just, you, as you say, target market, um, you just, you, you hit as, as many different areas as possible. And, and, and the good thing is, you know, I know nothing about cars. I don't have any connections in the car world, so I don't run a car show. Right. So I mean, okay. I'm in youth sports. So I run a lacrosse and a basketball event. You know, Tom Galati runs the car show because he's a lifelong uh, car fan and he's in car clubs and he's got all those connections likewise with golf. And obviously with the evening of tasting that, that went on for so long, um, you know, people are, are using their strengths to help the foundation, you know, and then my network helps me and Tom's network helps him and so on and so forth. And that's, and you know, it's a, it's a really good chemistry. All right. And I'll say, you don't have to, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world for the business too, you know, because people see the fact that you're involved and for you, you're delivering this message with the kids. So you're living the message that you're sure. delivering. So yeah. you, 
time. It's, it, it, so it just makes sense. It's just natural, you know, the whole way, it, you know, yeah. it goes. And then also, as you mentioned with the other guys too, I mean, they throw in their sports that they're interested in, you know, using it as fundraisers is a great way to show sure. their customers, their coworkers too, which it was right. also came out, you know, the fact that, hey, you know, we are involved with the community. We are looking to help out in a wide variety of ways that make sense, um, from a you know just makes sense internally makes sense as i mentioned in the beginning the feel good factor is absolutely there the you know the pr stuff is there too but yeah i mean you don't you you don't get into the nonprofit just thinking like oh my business is going to boom if you do it's it's not going to work like that no because <laughs> people don't see that um, right? nope but yeah i mean there's there's just association and if you're in a position where you do have some time and some resources that that you you can join any uh, any foundation or any cause that 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 you're interested in, that's it's just it helps everybody, right? And eventually something comes back in in turn. And I just think it's the probably you know outside of the philanthropic piece and uh, you know the just the charity piece, it's just networking. You you meet just a, a ton of people that you would never come across, and you never know how people are going to help people. Right. My, my lacrosse company can help somebody else and somebody else's company can help mine. And, you know, so it's a lot of it is B2B, you know, just networking without, you know, everyone's got everyone's got a similar uh, affection and uh, interest in helping a foundation. So it's like, oh, well, you know, I, you know, whatever I do, uh, I do printing, I print business cards. Oh, my, my lacrosse company needs business cards. You know, it's just it's natural. It's a natural fit. And that's what makes it work. It yeah. absolutely does. Yeah. You know, it's when you just, so that's way, where it goes, as you mentioned. If somebody joins a nonprofit for the sake of getting business and it doesn't make sense for them to be there, people see that. Yes. And not only that, you're not, that person that joins just for business, you can't lead with a business card. You can say, hey, I'm right. here to support you. Here's my business card. Right. Like, right. You no, know, <laughs> right. it's not why we're there. Right. And if, if, if you want it done properly, it's, you know, those are, those benefits are, are far down the line because it's work, right? You, to, to organize a basketball event, um, you know, I teamed up with, with, a, with one of my old CYO coaches um, at Hebron, you know, and he's, he's got a huge network of, of, of basketball coaches and teams, and he's still very active in it. And that's what I mean. Like, there was a couple of years, I played with his sons. I played uh, lacrosse with his sons in high school. And you know, like it, it's work and we put a lot of time into it, but that's what I mean. Like you have to have the time and you have to have the interest um, or else it doesn't work. And then you're not getting anything out of it. No one's getting anything out of it. It's kind of a lose, lose. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, if, and if you're the person that's supposed to be doing something and you really don't want to do it, and you don't do it. It's a letter right. for everybody, <laughs> which goes back to this whole thing. It's a team sport. Yes. No matter what it is that we're talking about here, whether it's business, nonprofit, or just personal growth, you know, it yep. is a team sport. It has to start with from within, as you mentioned, right? You have to have the talent to do whatever it is. You are not going to make me a good lacrosse player. You're not even going to make me a mediocre lacrosse player. <laughs> it just is not there. You know, <laughs> you can make me better than where I'm at, <laughs> but it's got to, but you know, it's got to start someplace. And this holds true in whatever effort that you're putting yourself into to make it to make it work on that natural side of it but, but, but let's go down the other side of it though it, the the fun factor you know when you're out there you get the teams and you're doing you know the, the three on three basketball event or you're doing the lacrosse event even if you go into the car show and you someone yeah. opens up the hood you're like okay <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like that's good i, I can appreciate it i just there don't you go. It, but yeah <laughs> that's an engine it works <laughs> yeah yeah exactly Exactly. I'm not terribly far behind that it, now. But... <laughs> but the fun factor has got to be there too, you know, as you do it, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I'm sure I'm sure you've heard about our board meetings, and there's a lot of food, there's a lot of laughs, and it's very productive. Uh, and like I said, it's just the culture that Terry and Paul has has created around around the foundation that that gets everybody interested. It keeps everybody interested. And then it just gets you excited about what's coming up next. And, you know, let me push, let me push your stuff on social for you. And let's, uh, you know, everyone shares everyone's flyers and things like that. And it, yeah, it's a lot of fun. 
It really is. Yeah, that's why I like it. I'm I'm so glad that you that you you joined us here because that team spirit, get it, it just is everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. I'm sitting I'm, I'm sitting here thinking it's like how many ways can we use this and how many different examples? It's everything. It's absolutely positively everything. Yeah, like, sure. I mean, on my own journey, there's no way I would have been able to do what I do if it wasn't for the team aspect of it even now right. i am sitting you know doing this by myself here in the morning but there was a lot of folks that helped me along the way you know right. it, it's there and they did it because they wanted to do it not because of any other reason sure. yeah yeah and that's and like i was saying before the majority of coaches you know you can teach a kid how to shoot but then it's like all right well now we got to get the team involved and try to figure out the strategy on how to get that shooter to shoot. Well, we need to win faceoffs, and then we need to get the ball and we need to stop the ball and all these different things. And every year you turn over kids because they graduate high school and then you bring in a whole new crop of ninth graders and that whole process starts over. So it's a never ending process of just trying to figure out how to create that team chemistry because you're working with, you know, on a, you know, an average high school team, 25 to 30 different personalities. Yeah. So it's, you know, if, if you, if you go towards it like that, you know, if you attack it towards the relationships and, and the personalities, then you know, it becomes a little bit easier. It's, it's always a challenge, you know, just like any, you know, company with, with employees and, and, and managers and such. I couldn't imagine what it's like to lead a company with a lot, with a high turnover, <laughs> no. with a high turnover employees, because you're constantly training the basics. Yeah. You're constantly trying to get everybody to work together and understand each other's everybody's different and all the rest of that, you know, and, and how to, to, how to sep how to, how to either play off of that or separate it. So, um, you know, if we're all on an assembly line and there's no thought process doing anything, it's just one thing or it's like whatever everybody is on the outside, yeah. you are, we're here for the one thing, yep. but you, you can't do that because no. everybody's outside talents. You need to, bring in sure it's yeah. not an assembly line yeah and that's where and that's where coaches really have to evaluate uh strengths and, and and try to try to fit strengths into strategy um or you know some kids show up and say well you know i'm a go uh, you know i'm a i'm an attackman and you're like well your strengths kind of go more towards midfield and you know and you try to experiment that way too and, and really help the kid out and help the team out so basically, you're a motivational speaker besides everything else, huh? <laughs> well, yeah, that's uh, the coaches definitely become motivational speakers because <laughs> you got you got to manage expectations, you got to manage the mental and the emotional dots of of the of the whole of the whole process. And if you're doing it correctly, you learn how to how to speak to kids and and just try to get them moving in the right direction, especially when they don't want to be. <laughs> ah, there we <laughs> that's, go. <laughs> that's where the motivation comes in. Yeah, but um, maybe I'll, maybe I'll bring you along with <laughs> yeah, on a yeah. couple of occasions. In, in yeah, the world. It's easy to be excited when it's, you know, 70 degrees and sunny, but when it's 40 degrees and the rain's, you know, hitting you in the eyes, it's like, it's not so easy to, to be competitive at that, at that moment. So those are the moments that you really train for. You know, we always yeah. say you just train for the rain, you know, so your habits take over when you don't want to be doing them. Not every day is a great day, <laughs> right? And it's yeah. like, what do you do on those bad days? You still got to show up and do. Right. Right. I, we'll save that. We'll <laughs> save that whole topic for another week yeah. when we bring yeah, people yeah. on because we you know we've all been through challenges. The question is, what do you do when you hit those challenges? Yep. You stick your head in the sand or back in the pillow. So, uh -huh. the weather's right. crappy. I'm not going. <laughs> Can't do yeah. that. Can't yeah. do that. All right. So where we where uh, so uh, MDP lacrosse. Uh, where, where, what area do you serve? Let's just talk about the business here for a little bit, and we'll you know yeah. we'll, we'll move on and we'll say great things about Terry to yeah. uh, Ball and the Macro <laughs> Foundation to close. But business wise, so do you cover? Is it a geographical area that you're? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, uh, naturally, people um, people find you if it's convenient for them, and then if if I can help them and prove, prove to them that my methods and our philosophies can really help Then you know, they, they stick around, but we, we, the majority of our business is individual training. We also do what we call specialized group training, which is, um, you know, like, like the standard, the standard lacrosse clinic with our twist to it, with the MDP twist to it. Um, and we do have a high school team. Okay. Uh, it's, all, it. it's all training based. It's, it, it all comes from the same, really just trying to connect the physical, mental and emotional pieces. And, and just put those pieces together for the kids. And then again, once they're aware of it, then they can 
hopefully, you know, they can do what they want with it. And that's, and that's really our, our focus. But yeah, I mean, we've had families from Connecticut, New Jersey, uh, as far out east as, you know, Shore and Wading River, uh, the city. It's, it, 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 it's all different. It really is. And it is, it's, it's a very intimate, the individual training is a very intimate process. Um, it's the kid and one of the parents. I make, they become my assistant coaches during the training sessions. They're right next to me. They hear everything I tell the kid. So they become my eyes and ears when I'm not around. Um, yeah. So it's, it, 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 there's, there's strong connections that we build because of, because of that. That's great. I, I'm yeah. sure all those kids are better off for it as they continue on with their lacrosse career, but just as important when they continue on with their own career their okay. own growth their own hey you know what i back in the day i used to train i used to play lacrosse now yeah. now i've got great leadership skills because this guy told me that you got to train for the rain <laughs> <Super> stuff <laughs> i might quote you on that i'll give you credit yeah. All right. yeah. i'm sure I, I i came up with it somewhere so just pass it along pass it forward inspired by others man. <laughs> uh, that's what it is but, and the magro foundation uh your final comments about them or why you think businesses really should get involved either with, uh, you know, Terry and Paul with the Magro foundation yeah. in their own yeah. way. I mean, even, yeah, even before Whatever. I get, uh, get to that, Jen, um, July 17th, we have our lacrosse alumni day. That's going to be at Hicksville high school. Um, we'll get the flyer. We'll get all the information out for that, but that's, that's the, the next event that I'm, um, you know, actively um, involved in, but um yeah, I mean, uh, we've touched on it. It's an incredible culture. Uh, Terry and Paul, they're just, they're, they're just tremendous human beings. They lead with compassion. Uh, they're, like I said, they're positive, they're productive. Uh, they get a lot done. And I'm, I'm happy to just be a part of it, really, just be associated with it. And I get opportunities like this to sit down with you and, and speak. And um, yeah, and I think I think you know if you have the time and the resources, it's it's very important to to look for something that intrigues you, that's something that you're interested in, that can help, you know. And if you can give back and help and bring your network into their network, and it just grows and it snowballs, then it's a win-win for everybody. Absolutely, and you it know? does continue to go on because there's so many businesses and parents that are affiliated with you from purely the lacrosse side of things and then they see everything else that's going on one it builds your you know your your personality up by what had and how they perceive you but then you know what i'm sure you've inspired many others from a lifelong standpoint to be involved within the nonprofit community too. yeah hopefully hopefully <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you do you know that's one of those things you know we we see the people that we're around we don't know what they do beyond but i'm sure that that is the case in there if yeah i got that yeah. opportunity to hear it yeah so, Jimmy, thank, thank you so much for joining us here today, being a board oh, member of the, of, of the Magro Foundation and for doing what you do. Likewise. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. My pleasure. So it's, uh, you know, there's so many things that, and, and I, I just got to say this, you know, before anything else, Terry, thank you very much for, uh, for building such an unbelievably strong team. It's been an absolute pleasure getting to meet getting this chance to meet and speak with, you know, many of the folks that are board members, supporters, you know, of the, of the Magro Foundation in what they are doing. And if for you, my friends that are listening to this, well, you've met quite a few different people that are involved with the Magro Foundation, but are involved with the nonprofit community in different ways. Sometimes it's just a matter of what you can do on a limited basis. Other times just fully joining as a board member, you know, to make that work. On your side of things, you got to figure out what makes the most amount of sense for you. What do I mean by that? Well, time is a consideration. Interest is a consideration. Your own resources are a consideration. So what makes sense for you? Well, you got to sit down, figure that out, and then speak to the nonprofit. Speak to Terry or Paul. Speak to some of the other board members. Speak to whatever group that you are considering to support and find out what it is that they need and how you could fit in with it. I guess you can almost look at it like an interview. You wanna make sure that it's the right thing for you, that they could utilize whatever it is that you are bringing and make it work that way. There are some nonprofits that we get involved with because it just is, because it's 
because your own situations it, it just is uh, you know you, you just you, that is what it is others a little bit more of a thing you know you figure out where you could fit in from a strategic business standpoint what what you know interests that are there and i'll give you a, a pure example of that you know if you're in the marketing business and you want to help out a nonprofit, and there's nothing that's personally that you're personally attached to you know what figure out what industry or whatever but they're all uh, there's so many groups i are always just looking for the visibility side so it, it really truly could eat that's an easy one where it makes sense but figure out your own resources you need to do what makes sense for you but you need to be able to deliver you know on that one too so find that right balance in there again thank you to terry paul magro foundation board members supporters uh been an incredible week i really appreciate everything that you have done for your community and i hope our community can then in turn support that community speak well my friends speak often and live inspired.